Hi, Dakota. How are you? Hello, doing fantastic. How are you guys doing today? Good. Really good. I'm Jabby Koei, and this is a Char Kirk. Oh, great. It's so nice to meet you guys. I think I watched one of your uh, reactions to one of our trailers. Oh, really? No way. That's yeah, awesome. No. Hi, I've seen your YouTube before. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My parents love, like, YouTube reviews and stuff, so they send me, like, their favorites. Okay. And you were, you made the list. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I feel honored. That's super cool. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I think I've watched your reaction video to oh. Uh, oh my gosh. the oh my trailer, God. for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. That's cool. Awesome. I wanted to ask you, the first thought that popped in my head when we knew when I knew we were going to talk to you was how brutal was it to shoot that mud scene? Oh my God. Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> it was, I haven't talked about it today. It was not pleasant. We did that for at least five days and it was, first of all, very thick. Like it smelled, and Dan told me this later, it started smelling like some kind of manure or like something rotten after a human got in it. So he was like, oh, Something clearly reacted to this, to the like human flow. I was like, what are you talking about? So yeah, not great. Oh no. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I appreciate the effort you put into it. It looked brutal. Well, given that it was your first film role, how nerve wracking was the first day of shooting and how long was it before all those jitters went away and you were able to get lost in the art of filmmaking? <laughs> I used to be a musician. Uh, well, I still am a musician, uh, but that, that was my main profession before the show. So kind of going into the audition, I was just kind of told myself, this is just another show. Just do your thing. And if they don't like it, on to the next one, you know? So I kind of just put that mindset throughout the whole thing. And luckily, everybody was so kind. It, it, it really wasn't too bad for me. I've always wanted to get into this. So uh, I just enjoyed the heck out of it. How many nods to previous Predator films are there in this film? And can you verify anything on Portal? I have to ask as a fan. <laughs> uh, I'm not involved in anything Portal okay. really right now. Okay. I do, I do believe that there's still something being worked on with that. And there's a poop ton of nods uh, <laughs> in the original. Um, there's some that are very overt. Some of them were accidental and then and a lot of them were intentional. Okay. <laughs> I only caught two. I got the gun and the mud. That was it. I was oh. like, those are the only two that I caught. Yeah, we were freaking out over the mud. We we're like, oh my God, is she going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> and then the next scene, she's washing it off. and no. Yeah, exactly. we're like, oh, I guess not. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought that was yeah. a clever a clever uh, subversion of the yeah. expectation. Your character went through a lot. Was that like the most difficult scene you had to shoot? Or were there any other scenes that were even more challenging? They were all pretty wild. I mean, there was even just like, like as simple as there's a scene early on in the movie with me and and Corbin Max character where we I'm like I'm gonna look for Tabe and I like run away and we like were it was a night shoot like middle of the night and we were holding the the like you know the torchy things mm -hmm. but it was like a huge stick and then fire on top of it and you're like sprinting up a hill in the dark and you have to like hold the flame near your face so they can see you so you're like running into a fire, like even, and that was just like one day, like even that part of it, I was like, oh, this is kind of crazy. And what was the auditioning process like? Was it like lengthy or was it like one and done, you got the role? I got the role kind of by a happenstance thing. Um, I had auditioned for something else, just at, a, at like an open call that I saw on Instagram. And then wow. I never heard anything about that. Like, I think it got canceled because of COVID actually. And then they sent me an email, uh, this casting agent lady, and then I auditioned, I sent a self-tape, and then I did a Zoom audition, and then I did another Zoom audition, and then I, they flew me to LA. And I honestly didn't know what the heck crap I was doing. Um, like, I didn't know it was a Predator movie until I got there, and I was pleasantly surprised with it all. I noticed you have a tendency to do first episodes. The Boys and Black Mirror are two of several examples. Does that mean if there's a sequel to Prey that this is your only one, or would you come back for more? It depends on what story we want to tell next. There are some stories that might be suited for a different filmmaker. And there's some stories that, that I might be best suited for. We're certainly thinking about what the possibilities are. Uh, were you doing any uh, guitar and singing between setups in the, on, while shooting or at the rap party, stuff like that? The boys on the movie, we all got along really well. And so we would always be up in each other's rooms playing guitar late night and <laughs> you know when we should be sleeping. But yeah, we, we had a lot of jam sessions. Your role in particular was extremely physical. Did you have to do any training for this or did you have any training prior to making this film? 
Yeah, we had um, a four week training camp in Canada before we started shooting. And so that had like weapons training and like personal training and stunts and stuff like that with a focus on obviously like Comanche style Mm -hmm. fighting and stuff like that and incorporating as much as we could. But, you know, also it's like, what really prepares you for like (laughs) being a river for a week or being in a mud pit or like, you know, what amount of personal training really gets you ready for that? I've noticed a lot more indigenous stories showing up now which is awesome do you think that we've finally reached a turning point for representation now certainly hope so you know when i think about um suzanne harjo she always says hollywood discovers indians every 25 years you know and and if you think about it that's kind of true so i was like no i'm going to be in this 25 years but i do think it's a big difference because what you see is you see like the products of uh the sundance institute people that have went through sundance Mm -hmm. i'm one i'm a two-time fellow like rizelle Benali is a two-time fellow. Taika Waititi, mm-hmm. that, I mean, when I first met Taika Waititi, it was like 12 years ago, you know, oh, and wow. going through the Sundance Institute's indigenous uh, program. Okay. So like all the people that you see that are, you know, not all, but like the majority, okay, are people mm-hmm. that came up through that. And it's, you know, when you have that kind of cohort, uh, Sydney Freeland, you know, she's working at Marvel. Uh, we're all able to kind of interface with each other, call each other, you know, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think? You know, I mean, it just kind of creates for more of a place where if you think 50 years ago, even 25 years ago, we didn't have that. Did you have to learn some new skills or were you that badass naturally? Well, I don't want to brat. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of the things. Luckily, I got to do all my own stunts and writing for the movie. Wow. So um, I think the stunt coordinator, he did, um, Steve, he did The Hobbit. So he's used to that bow stuff, you know? So just the speed of it all, it was just so exciting. I mean, that was definitely, the rolling around was kind of something new for me, but I enjoyed it very much. Did you get any injuries while shooting? A few, but I didn't tell anybody. (laughs) (laughs) You just toughed it out. I understand that there is a Comanche dub as well as Comanche subtitles for the film. Did you ever consider doing it completely in Comanche with English subtitles instead? The very first script said, to be all in Comanche. Um, it was it was certainly the, the initial instinct just wasn't in the cards for us um, as we proceeded. You know, we then progressed in making a movie that was partially in Comanche and then switches to English. And as we furthered that, we realized there's a lot of power in this version of it not being subtitled at all so that you're more firmly rooted in Nadu's story. And when she hears something that she doesn't understand, we hear something that we don't understand. Yeah. Right. That then evolved into, well, if this movie can feature the amount of Comanche that we really were initially interested in, maybe there can be this other version. And Jane really spearheaded uh, making that come to life. Was it all you during that fight scene? There was like a wonder where it was like a crazy choreography. That was really cool. So that was a cowboy switch between me and my stunt double. Uh-huh. So the way that we did that was like, we I literally learned that fight over like a couple lunch breaks. Cause like at some point I was started shooting and we didn't have time for me to like be in proper stunt rehearsal anymore. So we learned that fight in different ways. So we learned a version where like, we would cut and shoot do pieces and I would do pieces or where I would just do the whole thing. And Dan really wanted it to be a one, like a one or sequence. So I figured out was the best way to do it was that I would do as much as I could and then have wherever like the camera needed to be that like it would either be like my son double Tammy Nera or I would like run in and, and we would switch back and forth so that they could get everything that they needed as far as like camera. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Dan could have the wonder that he wanted, and then mm-hmm. we could have the same cool fight sequence because that was important to both me and Dan was that like everybody do as much of their own stunts as possible. And given that you're a musician, was there any talks at all about you doing music for the end credits? They never talked to me about it. I don't know if that reflects on my music, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, I, I wish, but no. Oh, I had to listen to uh, some of your music on your Instagram and I was very oh, impressed. So yeah, thank it was you. Thank really you so good. Much. Was there a particular scene in Prey or overarching theme that made you feel that you needed to tell this story? Uh, what well, was my initial pitch to the studio was very much the movie that we see today that was further developed with Patrick and he wrote the screenplay and did a tremendous job at writing something that has so little dialogue to tell a story and it's so um, powered by action and 
and hopefully some heart as well. When I initially discussed things with Patrick, it was stuff that I love to see. I love underdog stories. Um, gotcha, gotcha. And I love I love sports movies. I wanted this to feel like Rudy. Um, okay, 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 cool. Um, and really, really see how someone that everyone doubts and that she may even doubt herself mm -hmm. go through the ringer and have to fight with, you know, at blood, sweat, and tears to achieve what she sets out after, so. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I think you definitely succeeded with that. So seeing as you learned all these skills and I mean, naturally you were already super cool, did all your own stunts and stuff, right? How prepared are you for the zombie apocalypse and how long do you think you'd survive? Indefinitely. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I, think, I think I'd be okay for a good while. I don't know how long it lasts, but I, I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> uh, what was the toughest scene for you to shoot in this film? The fight scene was was physically tough, but also it was very enjoyable. There's a scene where me and Amber are back to back without going into too many details. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. That was interesting because there's all the smoke going through and you can't really hear each other very well. And also breathing in that smoke and, and flexing like yeah. you are, it really kind of makes you lightheaded. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> after a while, you kind of slur in your words and you're like, whoa, I feel funny. So yeah. that one was difficult for me, um, oh, wow. but uh, we got through it. I understand that you guys had to do dubbing in Comanche as well. Like, how does that change the feel of watching the movie? I haven't seen the movie in Comanche yet. I'm really excited to see it because we honestly finished it, I feel like, not long ago. <laughs> like the dubbing. <laughs> not a long time ago. We finished this. It was like maybe a couple weeks ago. It was an interesting experience for me. First of all, I'm not a Comanche speaker. Oh. So to be working with Comanche language like speakers and people who are giving their lives to preserving their language was like an amazing opportunity and I felt really fortunate to be that close to that mm -hmm. um, but then also to like be re like acting the movie all over again in a matter of like a few hours in a few days like over a couple weeks was so strange when it took like six months to shoot the movie yeah, so then yeah. like watch it and then in this like compact environment <laughs> do the whole thing again, yeah. but then in another language, I was like, this is really, the whole thing really felt like a boot camp. I'm gonna give a spoiler here. So <laughs> there's there one scene where you're in the air. Were you on wires for that stuff? Like how did they how did they shoot that one particular scene? Yeah, I think the one you're talking about, I'm on the wires and I basically have to lay out horizontally to the ground. Um, with, with, and, uh, and then they just kind of drop you on your face. Uh, oh and I, yeah, this is this is just a dude with a pulley, and he just lets go, and you're just like, thump. Oh uh, shoot! <laughs> right, yeah, it's kind of fun, but also I was covered with scratches, man. Oh, like, oh wow! Not gonna lie, the, the lady. Luckily, you know, I got some scratches anyway, so that kind of just went into my design. But I was pretty covered by the end of it all. Did you get any injuries while shooting this? And what's your favorite uh, Predator film besides Prey? Um, the original Predator, I think it's just, I've seen it so many times. I think it's so great. And just, there's so many cool references. And, and I think there would be no Predator movies without the original Predator movie. Right. And then did I get any injuries? I mean, I feel like kind of, yeah, all the time. Like in training camp, I like, I remember I like just showed up one day and like all of a sudden my hip was really hurting. And I was like, guys, I can't kick above my knee. And they were like, oh, what? Okay. <laughs> Um, oh. I was like, ah, and we like hadn't even started shooting yet. And then like at one point I remember being like, oh, it's so weird. Like every time I move, like my knee really hurts. <laughs> it was just like little stuff like that. Like nothing oh crazy. God. But it was just like general wear on your body. That concludes uh, all of our interviews that we conducted for the film Prey, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. Hopefully you guys get a chance to see it yourselves on Hulu. Let us know what you guys think. If you saw it already, probably haven't yet, but do check it out. It's a, it's a really, really, really good film. Yeah. I strongly recommend it. It was quite refreshing to see as far as films go today in general, but also for the Predator series. It was fantastic. So hopefully you guys enjoy it just as much as we did. That's it for now, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed hanging out with us. I'm Jabby Koi. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.